and welcome to another canvas and paint session offered by Garden City Arts. My name is Katie Guthrie and I'm going to be walking you through step by step a fun out of this world alien abduction painting. So first off make sure that you have all of the supplies you need before attempting this painting. Uh, the very first thing you want to have are all of the colors that I have here uh, laid out in the order that you see. Uh, if you purchase the kit from Garden City Arts, then your cups of paint are already mixed, ready to go, and labeled. Um, you can check out the video description if you need to figure out what paints we use to do this. You also will want a paper towel, cup of water, some chalk, We'll go over that soon. And some brushes. I would highly recommend having one big wash brush, uh, maybe one small and one medium sized shader brush and a round brush. Really, any brushes that you have, you can probably utilize and make work. So if you have all of these things, then you are ready to get started. Okay, step number one is very easy. We're going to use uh, Cerulean and we are going to put in a skyline. So if you need to, you can use chalk. The reason we're using chalk is because you can draw on your canvas, erase very easily with a clean, damp brush, and paint over it and it completely disappears. Uh, this is a really good tool to have in your arsenal as a painter. So with your chalk or with your paintbrush, you can put in your horizon line. I would use the biggest brush you have. Uh, mine is a three-fourths wash brush. And you are going to use this brush in two different ways. First, you can use the top edge of your brush to draw in a line. When you're holding it at its thinnest point, you can get a really nice, beautiful line. After you're done with that, you can mix in some water into your paint if it feels a little dry. My paint is a bit old, so it feels a bit dry. I'm going to get some water in there. And then you can use your brush at its broadest point to fill in space quite quickly. Now, the goal for this, for our horizon line, is to make it very heavy and lighter at the horizon line where the sun has just sank below the ground and then as we go up we want to run out of paint and kind of let the background the black show through so to do that you add water to your paint the more water you add the more transparent and translucent the paint will become now if you're trying to mix what i like to do is do a combination of the thin part of my brush and the thick part of my brush and you just keep working until you have a nice transition from light to dark. Now, does it have to be perfect? Nah, not at all. Keep in mind, nature is far from perfect, so it's all good. But you may need to put a second layer of your cerulean blue, especially if you mixed any water in to begin with, um, just to get it really nice and opaque. So when paint is thick and you can't see through it, it is opaque. Also probably means that you have not added any water to it. The second you add water to it, it becomes very transparent. So work on that until you are happy with your sky. For our next step, we are gonna put in some mountains and we're gonna be using color, well, Technically, this isn't a color, but uh, number two, Mars Black, and cup number three, which is a blue-gray mixture. So I'm going to move on to a smaller brush, a shader brush, size 12. Um, now, make sure that you dip your paintbrush in water and then pat it dry. It should be cool and damp to the touch, but not dripping wet. We're going to put in some mountains, and we're going to cut into our sky. So you can come back in with your black and kind of add in some basic mountain frames. I am outlining right now. I'm using the top edge of my brush to create some mountain peaks so that I have an understanding of what I'm going to do before I get to the serious painting. And then I'll have one right there, but I'll have to put it in in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my back mountains. 
the mountains in the back are going to stay pretty dark. Okay, so I'm going to put some black on there. Now here's the cool thing. Your ground, the canvas you were painting on, is probably still pretty wet. So as you start painting these mountains in, you are picking up a little bit of that blue paint and it is turning your black from Mars black to more of a blue black. So got my two back ones in. Now I'm going to start adding some of my blue gray. Now when you put something light on top of something dark or next to something dark, the light comes forward, your eye reads it as being closer, and the dark is farther back, okay? So your eye pushes it back. So that's why the mountains in the back stay pretty dark and black, and the mountains in the front kind of are more of this blue, gray, mountain-y kind of thing. Now I'm going to transition. You may need to use a little bit of water, mix a little bit of water into your paint. I'm going to transition from these gray mountains into my black background. So it just disappears into the background. And remember, the way you make paint transparent is to mix some water into it. Okay, so I have one side done. I'm going to speed up the video now that you've kind of seen the process and I'm going to keep going. Now remember, these mountains can have some texture. So I can come back in and add a little bit of texture by doing this little stippling action where I'm dotting my brush, going up and down just like that. All right, we are back with step number three. And for step number three, we have kind of two parts. First, we need to do some drawing with our chalk. Remember, the reason we're using chalk is because it can erase really easily. And then the second part of step number three is to paint, a, well, to apply the white paint. And we are using titanium white. That is in container number four. So make sure you have your chalk and let's go ahead and start drawing. Very first, we're going to start with the letter C in the upper right corner of our canvas. Then we're going to put a smaller letter C inside to make our crescent moon. Now, if you want to, you can draw out all of the little lines that we're going to add here in a moment to show that light is radiating out from our light source, our moon. If you also would like, you can put some stars around. Next, we need to put in a flying saucer. Now, I start with a curved line, and that is going to be for the top portion of our flying saucer. I keep it at kind of a diagonal. If it's straight on, it gets a little boring. There's not quite as much movement or a suggestion that it's about to fly away with this poor, poor camping soul. So we're gonna do that first. Then we add another curved line to create what kind of looks like a football. Um, the first line, it's like this football is not a normal football. It's kind of deflated on the top and then a little bit fatter on the bottom. And then we put on a half circle on top and that completes our flying saucer. It is literally that simple. Now, we're gonna put in some cones for what will become trees. What I do is I start in the front and I work my way back. You wanna have about two to three rows of trees. And what I mean by that is like a front row, middle row, and then a back row. The back row is the least visible. You only see the very top of the tree. So I'm gonna start with a nice big mountain or cone or tree. I am gonna have some coming off the canvas. Then my next row, I can start putting some more on. And this row can be about the same height as the front row, that's not a problem. It's when you get into the middle that you wanna start thinking about the points and being just a little bit above the first row. So I'm filling in my space, adding some more trees. And the back row doesn't have to be completely full. It could be just maybe one or two trees on the side. Okay. And done. Now we have to have the flying saucer have a light source. Or I'm sorry, a beam. A beam beaming up that poor, poor camping soul. So I am going to put a curved line that kind of resembles a hill 
in the middle of my flying saucer and then I do two lines. These lines should not be parallel. They should be slightly slanted and pointing inwards. So as they come out, the beam gets bigger. Now, like I said, the reason we use chalk is because we can erase what we do not want to keep. So I'm gonna erase the back end of my saucer and there we have it. Oh, and that tree, that tree is gone now. You can't see it through the beam of light. And I'm pretty happy with my drawing. I think that I'm gonna start painting. So you can use whatever size brush you want. I'm gonna use my shader brush. If you are brave, you could use your wash brush. Although getting into those little details might, might cause you some problems. Might have a bad time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my white and I'm going to make sure I don't drip water on my canvas. If you drip water, you might want to pick it up because it does wreak havoc. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline where I'm going to fill in my white. So I'm going to fill in white in the beam of my spaceship. And I'm going to fill in white for the moon. Okay, so outlining here is a really smart idea. You outline first and then you fill in. Now you can use a flat straight brush to create a curved line. What you do is as you paint, you rotate it with your two fingers, your thumb and your pointer finger. And that'll create a really nice line. Now, if you would prefer, you can pick up the round brush. The round brush is much easier to utilize when you are trying to paint curved lines. Okay. So I'm going to fill in my moon. I'm also going to fill in my beam and then I'm ready to move on. Okay. While we're waiting for our white to dry a little bit so we can add some more details, we're going to move on and we're going to start using our round brush. We're going to paint the stars in the sky really fast and we're going to add some of the um, light coming off of our moon. So I'm going to grab my round brush for this. It is going to be a little bit easier to paint smaller little teeny tiny details like our stars. What I am doing is I'm concentrating my line work kind of towards the um, portions of the moon that are closest and then as it comes away I spread out my lines just a little bit, space them out, and put them in my night sky. There we go. So I have my glowing moon. Then I can add some stars. Now I can add some really teeny tiny stars by barely touching the canvas with my um, the tip of my paintbrush. I can also create some bigger stars by adding kind of starting with a T and then adding an X through it. That'll be our glowing shining stars. And of course, make sure you add some bigger ones too, just for good measure. So some bigger dots where you're pushing harder with your brush. It's good to have variety. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my night sky. I'm ready to move on. So we are going to paint this spaceship and we're going to use kind of the same old colors that we've been using. We're going to use color number three, which is our blue green. We can use a little bit of black and we're going to use a little bit of white. So very first thing, I am going to draw in a few more details on our saucer. And keep in mind that this is your flying spaceship. You are the pilot. You get to do whatever you would like with him, with it, I should say. And I'm just going to draw a little star around the base, uh, kind of to make it a little bit more interesting and dynamic. So everything outside the star, I'm going to paint with my blue gray. And then I'm going to mix my blue gray and my white together to create a lighter version of this color. Now, little secret, I despise the round brush. It is my least favorite brush. 
I think it's really flimsy and difficult to control, so I very rarely use it. I'm about to switch over to my shader brush because quite frankly that just has a bit more give to it. It's not quite so flimsy. You can control it better. So once I'm done outlining, I'm going to switch over. Actually, I'm going to mix a color first. So we're going to take the blue green, sorry, blue gray, it's a blue gray, and we're going to take a little bit of titanium white and we're going to mix them together to create a light blue gray. This light blue gray then becomes the color that we use to paint around our beam, a little star pop on our spaceship, and also the top portion or the cockpit of our alien ship. Our flying saucer. Okay, so let's just finish up with a few details. You can mix some of your blue gray and your black, your Mars black together, and you can create kind of an in-between funky color. And I'm going to use that to do a little bit of outlining. I have a lot of water mixed into my paint and my in my brush at the moment so that it makes it really easy to glide across the canvas and create a really nice basic outline. It doesn't have to be super detailed. Next, you need to think about the cockpit and think about how it needs to be a little bit shinier, especially on the side closest to the moon. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white on the side that's closest to the moon and then let it get a little bit darker. You can mix a little bit of that blue green in to make it a bit darker on the opposite side, the side that's furthest away. Now, do you notice how there's kind of this imaginary point and all of my lines come to that point? In the middle, they're straight and then they kind of become curvy on the sides. Okay, I am finished with my spacecraft. Next step is nice and easy. We are done for now with our white, black, and blue gray. We are now ready for color number five, which is my favorite. It's a buttery color. It's cadmium yellow and titanium white mixed together. And we're going to pay some more attention to our moon and to our uh, beam. So I'm going to use, um, actually, I'm going to use my a larger shader brush and I'm going to paint in the sides of my beam with this beautiful color. Now on the sides I'm going to use a heavy amount of this color. Also keep in mind that um, white is kind of the wuss of the color wheel so it um, might not have to mix a lot of water into this to make it thin and transparent it will kind of do go transparent and see through on its own. So I'm going to put a lot of paint on the edges to get it to appear more opaque. It's a wuss, so you might have to use a lot. And then as I come into the middle of my beam, that's where I can kind of leave it alone. I can come back with color number, well, container number four, um, which is a titanium white if I feel like I didn't do a very good job on that first coat and I have some black showing through. And the goal is to make it really, really nice and yellow on the sides and a little bit brighter in the middle. Once you have that, you can turn your attention to your moon. And the moon is going to basically be primarily yellow. You can add a little bit of white detail into it if you'd like, just so that it's not like yellow, yellow. And once you're happy, you can add a little yellow to your moon and then we're ready to move on. 
hey, we are on the second to last step. Now the front uh, top half, I'm sorry, top half of our canvas has had a, has a lot going on. We've worked a lot, pretty hard on it. Now we need to focus on those trees. Those trees are going to be different uh, depending on where they are in relationship to our beam. So if they are closer to our beam, they are brighter. They are more of a yellow green. If they're further away from our beam, then they're going to be more of a uh, grayish blue. Okay, and we are going to start working on our trees right now. So we have two different greens. We have a blue green and we have a yellow green. This is actually kind of a, a middle of the road green, a permanent green. If you need to, you can always mix a little bit of your butter color in. Now, I would highly recommend using your round brush to make these lines. And keep in mind, you are gonna do a lot of swishing and flipping. So I'm gonna start with my blue green kind of in the middle, and I'm going to just quickly break down how to do this tree. You want to think of the tree as having layers, okay? And you build up, you kind of work up your way to the top of the tree. I should have started at the bottom. Now, these trees, it's the night. We don't have to be super detailed. Now, the lines kind of in the middle of the tree are gonna be straight down, maybe slightly coming out to the side. And then as they come over more and more, they're gonna get more and more um, diagonal, okay? And point out towards the edges of the tree. So I'm going to just add some of this in really fast. And then we can get to the fun part. The fun part is where we take this permanent green and we start working on the outside edges. Now, as you come out on your outer edge, you can go past and outside your cone. It doesn't have to stay inside the um, chalk lines. Now, remember, I told you you could mix a little bit of this butter color to create a really nice light green. Okay, so I'm going to have really light colors on the edges and then as it comes into the center, I'm going to switch back to my blue green. So I have blue green in the center, I have permanent green on the edges, and now I'm going to go back to my blue green and I'm going to work in between those two colors, the empty space where I left off, and I'm going to let them blend by moving them back and forth. So now I have a nice transition from dark blue green to the light on the edges. And remember, your tree should be nice and fluffy. And you have these all of these little teeny tiny swish and flip lines. So that is the basic idea of our trees. Keep in mind, it is brightest wherever it's closest to the beam. So over here, I'm going to go to the back row. I am going to use just blue green. But if I just use blue green, it's going to be kind of boring. You're not going to be able to see it very well. So I can use some of my blue gray and add just a little bit to give it some more details. Now, the way the trees interact is really important. So the way this tree is defined from this tree is very important. What you do is you keep it dark on the bottom and lighter on the tops of the tree. So once again, I'm gonna start with my blue green. It's my darker green. Just put in a little bit. Then I'm gonna put in my permanent green. I can go past the boundaries or the edges of my tree. And remember, you can grab some of the butter, color number five, 
and the permanent green and mix it together to make it a little bit brighter and more yellow green and then after you've done those two things you take your blue green back in and merge the two and mix the two but you do not keep that tree from going too much too too much lower than what it is and you want to make sure that it goes back into the black if you get carried away with your color you can always take some of color number two or cup number two and put some black back into it so don't worry paint covers paint okay i'm going to speed up the video and i'm going to finish my trees i've given you an idea of how to go about doing them remember think of your light source if the tree is off to the side it's going to be more of your blue green and your gray blue if it is closer to the beam you're going to be using this permanent green a lot Gonna speed up the video, finish my trees, and then we'll move on to the very last part, which is our little camper. Okay, very last step, we are going to work on our little camper. So, if you purchase the kit, you will have uh, a cheat sheet. Uh, which is basically transfer paper where you can draw your camper on. Now, if you don't have a cheat sheet, you can watch me. I'm going to draw it really fast. I'm going to start with a nice curved line. This is going to be for his arm and then his body, which will go into his leg. Now, I'll probably make a few adjustments as I go. Um, I'm one of those people who draw and then redraw and then redraw and then redraw. So after I have that curved line, I'm going to put his head then I finish off with the arm coming up to his body. I'm going to draw his body, kind of arch it similar to his back, and then have a foot kind of leaning back, a shoe, leg, and foot, and shoe. So basically, after you have that outside curve, you add a circle, then you add a line for the arm and then continue on until you are happy with your camper. I'm going pretty fast. This is a demo painting. You can take your time and do a better job and utilize that cheat sheet. We are going to use color number two or well, container number two, which is Mars black. And I'm going to add a little bit of water into my paint to make it a bit more fluid. Yes, this also makes it a bit transparent, so I want to make sure I'm not adding too much water, but I do need it slightly um, watered down so that it's easier to use and it's a bit more malleable. Once I have an outline, I can fill it in. I'm going to very carefully follow my lines. Keep in mind, my lines are just kind of a guide I usually change as I paint. And once you have an outline, then you can fill it in solid, just like we've been doing this whole painting. Okay. And once you're happy, fill it in and you have an abduction, an alien abduction. Uh, now, keep in mind that if you do not like what you are doing, or if you go outside the line, let me say I go, oop, oh, oh, he has an umbilical cord now, this is weird. So all I do is take a clean, damp brush and I can start on the outside and I can actually erase paint if I hit it while it's still wet. So if you're not feeling this camper, you can erase the whole thing and start over. If that doesn't work, then you're gonna have to paint over it. Now, painting white on top of a dark color is not the easiest thing to do in the world. It'll take probably two or three layers. You'll have your uh, patience tested a little bit, but you can do it, so don't worry. Don't stress too much. Keep in mind, there's always a solution if you are unhappy. Painting is just a series of problem solving. So now that I have my camper filled in, I am finished. All I have to do is sign my work 
and wash out my brushes and call it good.